Hi, I'm Chike Coleman, that's Sanford Hess, and this is Rural Reviews Rewind, the show where we rewind the clock and look at older movies. Now, we've been following a trend in looking at newer movies, and we're going to continue that with the first show of the new year. We had some slightly older films that we wanted to look at, but they're not too old. They're like a month old. Uh, in this case, that means we're looking at Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Aquaman. I want to start with... Aquaman, directed by James Wan, starring Jason Momoa, Amber Heard, Nicole Kidman, and Patrick Wilson. Uh, basically focuses on a mermaid who comes ashore to a lighthouse and falls in love with the lighthouse owner. And they have a baby, and the baby turns out to be Arthur Curry, uh, a boy who is so supposed to be the uh, presumed king of Atlantis. Turns out his brother uh, has that crown and wants to keep it and has a problem with the Earth Dwellers. This forces Arthur Curry, who really hasn't fully accepted his destiny as king, to kind of fight for it. Not in a Black Panther style, but more so protect uh, his other home. Um, for me, uh, the visual effects of this film are good except for that first scene with the flashback you can tell that that's totally cgi um you mean when making the actors look a lot younger you, and he they really didn't do it that much for nicole kidman but for the other guy you can clearly tell that they did some cgi trickery that just does not work they clearly don't have the marvel money wow okay i, I had to throw that urn in there um so here's the thing. My interpretation of Aquaman has always been the old school, I guess, Silver Age version, where he's a very straight-laced guy who just loves ocean life and has the ability to talk to uh, ocean life. And um, that's not what this Aquaman is. He's, he's reckless. He's not exactly like a drunk. He's like a combination between a surfer and... He's a surfer and a realist, basically, all in one package. Wow, cool. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't really endear me to him because everything is a joke until it gets too serious not to be. And even though I dislike the character of Aquaman, I like the movie. Okay. What, well, I mean, what makes you like the movie despite the character? I like the effects. I like the political intrigue and the issue with Atlantis and the brothers clashing. I also like, I forget what the other side villain's name is. Do you remember? Willem Dafoe's character? Yes. Uh, I don't remember his name, but Willem Dafoe's character. Willem Dafoe's character. He's sort of the older advisor to uh, both, to both uh, Aquaman, as well as his brother, he sort of advised them both as they were growing up. Yeah, Willem yeah. Dafoe's character is great. Um, I just, I don't know, it's like watching a National Geographic movie, but it's a National Geographic with a superhero. Right. And he's trying to be cool and be a super dude and you don't really care, but you do care about the people that he cares about. And that's what I think makes this movie strong. Um, well, let me say, I agree on that one because this movie could have, I mean, there's two main things going that you're saying here, and I agree with both of you. There's a good story with good characters, mm -hmm. and it's visually beautiful. Did yeah. you see it in the IMAX? No, I did not. Okay, I mean, it, it's just visually staggering in the, the underwater stuff and the sort of currents and the floating hair. Yeah. Visually, it's, and, and all the, the, the colors, you know, the sort yeah. of the, the glow-in-the-dark colors. Yeah, if so, you've ever wanted an OLED TV, getting Aquaman on 4K when it comes out right. would be ideal. Absolutely. This would be a good one to test your visuals with. Yeah, so, but having both of them together makes for a very strong movie. Absolutely. Right. But what did you think of Aquaman? I've talked about what I liked. Um, did you, were you a fan of this Arthur Curry, or are you more Silver Age Aquaman? The only Aquaman I knew was the 1970s Super Friends Aquaman. Exactly. So that was the only one I knew. This one, 
I, I guess, I don't know, I, I actually, I did a little reading after I saw the movie about the sort of recent development of Aquaman. Mm -hmm. The thing to me that I didn't really care for a little bit about the character was how powerful he was. Yeah. He's pretty much invulnerable in the movie. Yeah. I mean, he can do most anything, and actually all the Atlanteans kind of seem to be invulnerable to a certain extent, at least his brother is. Mm -hmm. Um... And, you know, and then there are these fighting scenes, but they're not really getting hurt. Yeah, like Nicole Kidman's one fight scene that she gets, she doesn't even really get grazed. Right. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go back now because I fought off all these dudes and they're just going to keep hunting me anyway. Bye. Right. Well, I did, I did like this sort of trick of that, that they, could, they couldn't breathe air. Yeah, that was kind of nice. But the sort of royal blood can. Yeah, that, that was how they rode around that. And I thought that was a good <laughs> solution. So It's a great solution. Yeah, because... but. I didn't like how powerful he was. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the problems I have with Superman as a character, is that you know he's so powerful that wh where's the story go? I know that they've done lots of stories, but in every case, it just ultimately is Superman is more powerful than the other person. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I like to stay within DC. I like Batman as a character. Yeah, because he's not powerful. Okay, which so, is so that's what one of the problems I have with Aquaman was just sort of I get bored by this character because it's just like oh he's just gonna. Whatever he's got to do, he's going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something to you that you, you're going to find hilarious and awesome. I'm going to Cinema 101 you right now. Okay. So the hero's journey, you know, he starts from a downtrodden place, comes up, does better, has a bit of a weak point for something or someone, falls back down. This follows that structure... But you don't care enough about Arthur for that to really matter. Also, I would say that the point where he cares about somebody and is sort of the weakness occurs very early in the movie with his dad. Yeah. So once they get past that, it's just kind of the steady upward climb for the entire rest of the movie. And that's where I have a problem because it's like... It, it, in um, Man of Steel, since you want to go on a Superman tangent sure. here, you've got Clark Kent who, you know, doesn't really know where he belongs. He's got this great, amazing family. Oops, his dad dies in a tornado. You feel bad for him, but you're like, that's not really weakening him at all. Right. Then, you know, at the end of Man of Steel, it's like, well, his home planet is being threatened, and the only thing he, he can do is actually kill this guy, and he doesn't want to. You feel only moderately bad for that character, but you have... Clark Kent in, say, the Richard Donner Superman, he loses Lois in a freaking earthquake. <laughs> Somebody who he has taken the time to get to know, spend a lot of time with. Right. Be, has, a weak, has a weakness for. Has a weakness for as Superman and as Clark Kent, because he doesn't mind the jabs that he's a small-time farm boy. Right. And she dies in an earthquake. Dude goes berserk and rewinds time to save her. You really truly get the full hero's journey where you can't really have everything, but sometimes, just sometimes, you can make miracles. And you don't get that with Arthur Curry. You get that, oh, I'm a rock star and I'm a badass because I can do all these things and animal life likes and respects me. And when I'm in trouble, animal life will come to defend me. Right. But you don't well, really get anything else. Aquatic life. Yeah, aquatic, aquatic life. Okay. Which, I gotta say, for this is, so here's, here's sort of sideways praise for this movie. For making the power to talk to fish interesting, they succeeded. Yes. Right? I mean, because that always was kind of the, the sort of dorky part of Aquaman. Like, his superpower was and talking the to fish. The dolphin's like, <laughs> But in this movie, it's yeah. like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, like, even if you look at something as basic as the aquarium scene... Exactly. ...you get a cool moments with the fish. Right. Because there is a point where, you've seen it in the trailer, he gets bullied, the, the fish slams against the glass, everybody was like, what? what ha what's happening? And, and, you know, you see his eyes change, and you're yeah. like, oh, okay. Now, actually, so again, that part of the movie was one of the parts I liked, was the sort of... I liked the way that they told the story in flashbacks. Yeah. So the first third of the movie was probably my favorite part of the movie because I liked the way that they developed his character over, you know, sort of slowly. Yeah, but I don't back feel like forth. they developed it enough because that hero's journey doesn't happen. That's right. That's like, right. Had they told it in order, would it have felt better to me? No. Um, had they added more tragedy on top of his backstory? 
maybe? But what could you possibly do? Well, his mom's tragedy. Yeah, that too, but like... Wait, wait can I make one more comment on the mom thing? Because yeah. this was, I mean, this movie is kind of cliche in a lot of ways. They yeah. steal, you know, he's the, the most powerful one from the Matrix, or they're stealing this from a sort of common theme. Okay. I'm watching the end of this movie, and I'm giving a little bit away here. But he does have a reunion with his mom. Yes. And I'm watching that, and I'm going, this is deja vu. With the mom, who's like a well-known actress, um, being lost for a long time. And I realize it's the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. Uh... At the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, they find Michelle Pfeiffer in that case. Right. Has been keeping going for like 20 years, waiting in the very tiny space, right. whatever. I was like, oh my God, they totally either, you know, act, I mean, they, they, given the timelines, they probably did them around the same time. Yeah. But it just was an example of how cliche this movie is, up and down, story-wise. Yeah. But well done. And then my final thought on this movie that I was a little bit of a complaint just because it was such a high bar. What you got? In Justice League. Yeah. He was my favorite character by far. Oh, yeah, because he is the one, only one having fun. Absolutely. But also the music. The music he got in Justice yeah. League was so dun, cool. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, 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 dun. yeah, we got the White Stripes and some Zeppelin, I think. And then to get to this movie and it's like this orchestral score and yeah, singing fish. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I, I was a little disappointed there wasn't a little more of that kind of little. I mean, there was that the mean, same edge to the character. If they leaned more into the rock vibe, would I felt better or worse? And the, and the answer to that question is I don't think I would have cared because you didn't give me enough progression. Right. Um, so the, I, I, my, oh God, I you, say my final word on Aquaman is that, as a character, I look forward to him in more group movies. But I don't know if I need to see whole Aquaman movies on his own. I would say Aquaman will be better. Aquaman two or a Justice League movie will be better right. if they give him more emotional resonance. I want him struggling with being king like they had Black Panther struggle with being king. I want him having to make tough decisions that really hold emotional weight for him where he can't just be, well, I'm Aquaman, I'm, I'm badass, I can do anything. Right. That's what the movie needs that it doesn't have. Well, that's a, then that's a good segue because you're right that a lot of times the first movie of a series has to tell the sort of origin story. Right. Then, after they get that out of the way, then they can really start going in interesting directions. Speaking of a movie that does that well, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse also came out around the same time as Aquaman. And so, for me, this is the exact opposite of Aquaman. This is a, a, a movie that has a full and complete hero's journey. Not for just one character, but like three or four of them. Um, people have said in the last week or so that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is their go-to animated movie for the Oscars, and I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how I'm going to ever feel anything for this character. The visual style is so different. When I finished that movie, I was like, I want to watch it again right now. Exactly. I need to watch it again right now. Did uh, you? No. no. I did. It was like midnight when I, I finished. I keep but trying I to get like, my son to go to see it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Drive him if you have to. Exactly. No, drag him, I think. <laughs> okay. So here's the basic plot of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. you got Miles Morales. Good kid. Well-meaning kid. Um... He has an uncle, a mom, and a dad. Basically what happens is he hates going to this new private school. He doesn't really feel like he fits in. He likes this girl, in the, and I want to say her name is Gwenana. That's what she says. Yeah, that's what she says. Um, and it kind of backfires on him trying to, you know, be cool and talk to her. Um... But this is after something happens to Miles. Miles is actually doing graffiti in a subway when he unknowingly finds a secret lair of Wilson Fisk, who has opened up a door to parallel universes. 
to try and get back his family whom he lost while fighting Spider-Man. Can I just say, for that to be a plot line in a sentence for a Spider-Man movie, to give Wilson Fisk, who we know to be one of the biggest baddies of all time, to give him emotional resonance in that line of dialogue, amazing. That's when you know it's a quality movie. Right. So when you actually have empathy for the bad guy, you have empathy for the bad guy, and really you've not been in it long enough to have empathy for a bad guy. Yeah. But you hear that and you go, "Oh, right." Well, actually, let me rephrase that. Not even empathy, but you understand where he's coming from. Yeah, you know, and that's cool. It grounds him. You're it, not like he's not just some psychological maniac. He actually has a reason to open up an interdimensional portal, and mm -hmm. it's internally coherent. It is. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yes. So. Of course, you know, when Miles stumbles upon this, he gets bit by a radioactive spider. Uh, he also witnesses the fight between Wilson Fisk and Spider-Man. Uh, and before Spider-Man, something happens to Spider-Man. We'll just say that. And um, the portal is opened and all the other Spider-People come out. Miles is a careless human being. Let's start with that. Miles is a careless human being, and he deserves to be so because he's a kid. He, Miles gets this important thing, this MacGuffin, that he accidentally destroys while trying to learn how to be like Spider-Man. Um, this is Cinema 101 today. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because of him destroying the MacGuffin, the other Spider-Men that exist in the parallel universes are all brought in to help him get that item back in shape. Right. It eventually gets destroyed a second time, but we're not going to go into it's that. It's a MacGuffin. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go into that. Anyway, so all the Spider people are there and they're, you know, going to lose their lives the longer they stay in the universe that they're currently in. And they're all trying to train Miles, especially Peter Parker. Uh, Who? You know... Peter B. Parker, but okay. let's... Anyway, so basically Peter Parker and all the other Spider-Man people are training Miles, and Wilson Fisk is continuing to do his dirty deeds, and the Spider-People are trying to stop Wilson Fisk uh, because he's going to basically destroy the world if he keeps trying to use this machine. Um, and Miles is learning important lessons along the way about loyalty and... and and friendship and being a good partner. And oh. trusting himself. And trusting and, himself. You know, and achieving his potential. And achieving his potential. There's also an, a, a death that occurs that, to me, when I saw I was like, oh, that's completely left field. I don't really know how to feel about that. Hmm. Um, and when that occurred, I was like, oh, this movie got real a fifth or sixth time. Um... Well, you know, and you're you're doing a great job summarizing this movie, but this movie has so many... There's so many little things that are amazing yeah, yeah. about yeah. this film. There's so many stories that are mixed in with all these characters, uh, all you know, all these different spider uh, alternatives from different universes. Right, which includes Spider-Noir, Spider-Pig, uh, Spider-Gwen, who I'm actually familiar with, uh, Penny, Penny Parker. Yeah. Um, just And her robot. And her robot. Yeah. All these different characters that exist within this universe. I read it, that they actually, they at one point, they were going to have like 10 or 12 of them. Ooh. Yeah. That would have gotten tricky. Yeah. Um, I think cutting it down was good because it let them actually, you know, each of them gets a little introduction. And each of them, to a certain extent, like you mentioned, goes through its own character arc. Yeah. Maybe not War Spider-Man, who no. was the weakest of the bunch for me. Unfortunately, because yeah. I love that character in video games. Oh, yeah? Um, but yeah, this is a really good movie. Uh, and, yes. And it's one that, <laughs> once it comes out in a steelbook format for Blu-ray, I'm picking it up. Got it. Has to happen. Because the visual style of this film is so unique, so arresting, and so much like a comic book that... It just pulls you in and never lets go. Much like that would be for an eight-year-old reading his first comic book. I, you know, I'm going to key off that last statement. I totally agree with you that this book has turned the page in terms of showing these comic books on yes. the screen. But I'm also a little cringing because 
Will we ever want to watch any more of these that aren't animated? You know, I mean, could this really uh, ruin mean, superhero movies for us? I mean, here's the way I see it. There are two really good superhero movies that are animated. Batman Mask of the Phantasm, which I don't know if you've seen. I don't. I haven't. It's a great film that should be on our list. Okay. And this film, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Batman Mask of the Phantasm was great because it gave us the backstory we never knew we wanted about why Bruce Wayne became Batman and the effects of making that choice on him. Right. Which is why, again, the darkness of Bruce Wayne is definitely my favorite part of that character. And the hero's journey completely goes through with Batman, just as it does with Miles, but in a completely different way. Yeah. Um, but what I'll say about this is the voice acting is great. The animation style is great. Right. The humor is hilarious. You're not going to not laugh. Well, and that would be another reason to pick up the, the sort of edition later because there's a, a hundred jokes, I'm sure, that you know, you're, you're not going to catch them all. So, you know, watching this movie annotated or having somebody talk through it would be awesome because yeah. just kind of throwing out some of the gags that, you know, and I, here's another one. I mean, it's like my experience with Spider Man ended also a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of Spider-Man things that have happened since then that I have no reference to. But mm -hmm. I like to be in on the joke sometimes. And, and they have uh, they have a reference from a Spider-Man thing that I've re recently done, which is Spider-Man the video game. The, yeah, the, and that's for me, it's like whoosh. The newest you know, one from the PS4. They too. include a second of his costume in, in the movie. Yeah. But the thing that I think, and this is kind of a spoiler alert, uh, did you go stay through the end credits? I did. So then stay you, through the end credits. Stay through the end credits because they do something really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they bring in Spider-Man 2099, which I think is amazing. But they also do a nod to 1967 Spider-Man. Yeah, and that, I didn't even know that one. And for me, I, the, the only one that I think that I didn't see was the Electric Company. Yeah. I would have loved the Electric Company. An uh, Electric Company nod would have been nice. That's... But 1967 Spider-Man, I'll take. And yeah. Stan Lee cameo, I will take. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, well, but let's talk. What about are your thoughts, though? I, I've been talking about this ad nauseum. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. This movie is amazing, and you know, one of the re I was throwing that out there about the animated, but really the difference is this movie is animated, yeah, but it's a fabulously told story with characters you care about, and yeah. that's really what matters. And then you know, it's what I, it's why I like some of the group movies because for me the actual fight scenes and, and stuff like that are often the weakest part now of some of these movies. Yes. Spider-Man, Spider-Verse was like that a little bit too. The actual sort of knockdown, drag out fight scenes are were sort of great. visually, they were visually like all over the place. Yeah. You know, bright and colors and splashing and stuff like that. But I definitely preferred the story and the characters and the, the, the arc of the, of the, the, the Miles development. Um, so for me, that was part of like, I was really surprised by that. Because I thought, especially having seen just the trailer, I thought, oh, well, it's going to be visually cool. And then that's, you know, that's the best I can hope for. Yeah. So I was really, I was really pleased with that. And I just see that as an example of it's not just a cool superhero movie. It's not just a cool animated movie. It's just a great movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the kind of movie that, again, like I said, I want to take my son to because there's a story there that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, I will, you know, and, and that was one of the things also from the Spider-Man. This was, to me, awesome. A little bit more of the Spider-Man. So I have a couple of references for Spider-Man. Yeah. Another one was the Daily Comic. I used to read that in the I paper. I didn't know they out. had a Daily Comic. Yeah, yeah. And, but the Spider-Man, the, the problem I had, for example, with the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies was that he was too good looking, too, uh, you know, too confident, too cocky. That and kid was a straight up hipster. Oh, and Miles? No. Oh, uh, Andrew, Andrew Garfield? Uh, yeah. 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 And that's not Spider-Man. Spider-Man no. is a geeky, you know, 16 year old thin kid who surprisingly has these powers. Yeah. And this movie was much more true to that. Agreed. You know, and I love that. And I love the fact also that he couldn't kind of control his powers. Yeah, no. That, you know, to me, that tells the cool story of how you grow into them. Although, I will say this, once he grew into his powers, he had two perfect 
control over them. Yeah, I agree. So that the whole sort of last fight scene, I was like, oh, okay, well now he's a martial arts expert. Yeah, you know? but he, you gotta, uh, I'm gonna cut some slight slack with that last fight scene because, you know, it's the moment where he finally believes in himself. True. It's the moment where he finally gains grip of who he knows himself to be. But then it goes on way too long. Well, I mean, after that point, it, there goes on, the fight scene goes on for like another five minutes. I know, but... And, you know... And, you, you gotta have, give him the time to have his literal climax of a fight. You can't cheapen it by like, oh, he finally punched Fisk in the face. It's done. Well, that's true. It would be, it would be a shorter movie. The, the, the thing that weirded me out with what, what one of his powers was, was the black venom. That was weird, but I also understood, you know. Yeah, spider. Spider, spider venom, you know. Makes sense. Um, all right, so you looking forward to the next animated Spider-Man, or should they stop at one? Well, they've already got spinoff, a, a female-related spinoff that they want to do. Thank you, Me Too and Time's Up movement, for giving us female representation in animated movies because that has been a thing that has not been fairly addressed. They're only doing Tangled 2 because Tangled 1 works so well. You know, now that they're hip to the idea of gender not really being a thing that can define a movie, I'm glad that, you know, they're going to be more female hero characters for, for little girls to look up to. Right. Um, because it's been a male-dominated society for a very long time. Um, I'm looking forward to more spinoffs. I want to see what Spider-Gwen is up to. Uh, I think there might be a slight romance between Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales in the future. Well, but I mean, Spider-Gwen is from a different universe. Yeah, so. but they found a way to keep in contact. So. Oh, okay. So, so uh, let's key off that. So looking forward to 2019. Yeah. Uh, the one movie I'm looking for, I think it's, in, I'm sorry, 2020. Uh, no, 2019. I think one is uh, Wonder Woman 1984. Isn't yeah. that coming out this year? I think that is this year, and I want to figure out what they're doing with Steve Trevor. Well, but I just like the idea that, okay, they've told the origin story, so now they can, like we talked about, they can move on to a more interesting story. Yeah, but they didn't go straight to the present, which is what I respect and love. At, at, it gives you, I mean, think about what a cool opportunity for them. They have an opportunity now to make Wonder Woman movies at any given point during that time. Yeah. It's kind of like X-Men, where they've done some of those time travel movies or gone back and told the sort of earlier versions. Right. It's great. They just kind of it gives them so many stories to tell and introduce new characters. I love that. Yeah. Um, for me, the one movie that I'm looking forward to in 2019, um, and uh, knowing that I don't really like horror movies, this is a, pr a surprise to even me, but Happy Death Day to you, the sequel to Happy Death Day. <laughs> I want to know what they do with that next because the first one, they revealed the villain to you, made complete sense why that would be the villain, and that was it. Well, that's and, that's why they should stop because that, that's when that, you that's know. why you would think that they would stop. Oh, but it they should stop. But for but some they reason, won't. it they restarts, and I'm trying to figure out why it would restart, and I'm curious, like, what would cause that? But I also do want to see Jordan Peele's uh, next directorial effort, Us. Yeah. That, that that trailer looks oh, scary as hell. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, that that that's uh, going to be potentially really good if it's as good as the trailer for sure. Yeah, uh, and the only thing that I'm really concerned about now is the Oscars. I have no idea who is going to win those categories. I'm kind of freaked out because the Golden Globes didn't go the way anybody said it was going to go, except for uh, from Olivia Coleman from the Queen uh, from the the favorite favorite. Yeah. Oh, she won. So well. So we'll have to have an Oscar preview show soon. We will, we will, we will, and until then, we will see you guys in I think two weeks. Is that right? Something like that. Two weeks or something like that. Bye, guys. <laughs>